All right, so in this video, we're gonna go over the difference between chronoampiometry and chronopotentiometry. Chronos just means time in Latin. So in both of these techniques, you're measuring things versus time. So time is on your x-axis, which means seconds in both cases, okay? Sometimes we abbreviate chronoampiometry as CA, chronopotentiometry as CP. Ampiometry, right? Mitri just means measuring. Ampia means measuring amps. So you, amps is a unit of current. So you're measuring um, current versus time, right? So maybe you get something like this. Here you're me measuring metric of potential. So you're measuring voltage versus time, okay? Maybe your voltage is rising over time. And that's fundamentally uh, uh, what is happening. Okay, um, an interesting thing that you usually wanna do in both of these techniques, oh, and I should mention that um, here you're holding the voltage constant in chronoampiometry. In chronopotentiometry, you're holding the current constant. And so um, another term for these is, uh, you know, holding the voltage constant, you would say we're doing this uh, potentiostatically. That is, you're using a potentiostat to carry out this experiment. Whereas when you're holding the current constant, you're doing the experiment galvanostatically. Okay, that is, you're using a galvanostat to hold the current constant or carry out this chronopotentiometry. These days, galvanostats and potentiostats usually are looped into one instrument, but there is different circuitry that makes a galvanostat work and makes a potentiostat work. And so those are where those terms come from. Um, generally, it's, it's useful to perform chronocoulometry, that is measuring the amount of charge passed over time. And you can do that in both of these cases. For the case of uh, chronoampiometry, that's gonna be equal to the integral, right? So if this was zero and we're doing an oxidation, let's say this is positive current, we would take the integral over time, right? Because current in amps is equal to, um, well, I is usually has this, but an amp, is a unit of coulombs per second. And if we take the integral, we're multiplying current times time, so we get charge. Here, it's the same thing, but we are defining what the current is. And so um, it's not really an integral. Let's say we define this chronopotentiometry to be at plus one amp, and we, we did the experiment for 60 seconds. Again, we do one amp times 60 seconds, but there's no integral, it's just multiplying these two, and we get 60 coulombs would be our answer, or after 60 seconds. Um, generally speaking, if you're sort of uh, early, in the early days of experiments, you're probably gonna be doing more chronoampiometries. And the reason is because you're holding um, the voltage constant, you are holding the free energy constant of the system, the driving force of the system constant. And so the types of reactions that can happen are usually constant over time. Later on, when you're optimizing devices and building devices, usually you're gonna be doing it galvanostatically, although you could also be doing it potentially statically. Um, but here it's a little more complicated because the voltage or driving force is changing over time. You're holding the rate of the reaction steady, right? Remember, think about um, current as kinetics and voltage as thermodynamics. So you're holding the kinetics steady. And over time, things could be degrading. Let's say you have a battery, right? That's going. The battery might be degrading over time. And so the voltage has to ramp up. Your over potential with the amount of driving force that you have has to ramp up over time. And then different reactions could, could occur over time different side reactions, let's say, as you're pushing the system harder. Uh, and so that just generally makes chronopotentiometry more complicated to interpret than chronoampiometry.